Okay, I'm back out in the shop. As you can see, this should be the start of, I believe it is episode six. So, making pretty good progress on the trailer. Um, I actually laid the fenders up there just temporarily on some blocks. Gives you an idea of what it'll be like with the fenders on it. And as we discussed in the last video at the computer in the CAD drawing, I'm working on, I'm gonna work on cutting the quarter quarter sections out of this piece of pipe. Um, so I've got it clamped in a piece of angle iron to, to use as my straight edge. Otherwise it would be pretty tricky to try to freehand that straight. And I debated on which method to use, whether I cut the quarter rounds out first, or I also thought about cutting out the appropriate section here in the frame, setting the whole pipe in there, tacking it, and then going along and kind of use that as a straight edge to cut the three quarters of the pipe out. Um, but it would have been kind of tight to get the plasma cutter in there. And I think that um, this method will um, work a little bit better. One advantage of a straight edge out and open like this is it'll allow me to keep the torch angle how I want it. So instead of actually cutting it, making the slice perpendicular to the body of the tube, I'm going to try to cant the torch a little bit, so if that would be basically, at this point on the tube, that would be basically square. I'm going to tip, I'm going to exaggerate, so I'm going to tip the torch way down to kind of have a uh, knife blade type cut, and kind of here's the reasoning behind it. Um, as you can see right here, and at the bottom, by having a kind of an angled cut on the pipe versus square, when I butt that up, that'll leave that open V spot, V notch in there, and that'll be a good spot. Instead of having to grind out for a weld prep, that'll leave kind of an area for weld prep. So I should be able to burn that bead in there and, and not have a bead sticking out. Yes, I only need to go as far as here um, for the width, and that'll leave me a scrap piece. I'm probably also not going to start from the very end. I'm going to come in about a half of an inch or maybe even a quarter of an inch plunge cut and then come down and what that'll do is that'll keep that in locked in because depending on how much internal stress there is in this pipe it's possible that it'd try to open that gap up uh, so by leaving that little piece on the end intact that should combat that from happening if i do see it opening up part way through i may even stop at one point skip over skip down a quarter of an inch and re-plunge cut and come through in that way um, it holds it still as close to perfectly round as possible for when I make the other uh, two cuts. So we'll just see what the gap looks like as I'm going along. I'll be able to see if it's growing or not. So um, we're going to get going. Okay, I got the pipe um, rotated 90 degrees plus a little bit to account for the kerf. Um, and I also tipped it up. It worked out well when the pipe is balanced on its own radius as well as the angle iron as the guide. If I hold the torch exactly perpendicular or plumb, that gives me about the perfect um, angle. When I did the first one, I noticed at the very beginning, I didn't realize I was doing it, but as as I was swinging along, getting closer to my body, I was actually rolling the torch up a little bit, so um, which won't hurt anything. Um, it cut into the, what will be the waste piece, but there was, um, you can kind of, you probably can't really see from there. You can see here that there was a, right here that I started, it was starting to actually cut way down into there because I was, instead of being at maybe a, uh, 45 degree angle to perpendicular it was probably closer to 30 so that's just come on so hopefully you can still hear me okay so I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing I'm going to make a plunge cut out here at the one length go almost all the way to the end leave about a quarter of an inch so we'll be going Thank you. 
That cut came out quite a bit nicer since I was carving this in on my torch angle. Uh, it just looked like it was ran through a saw. So I'm going to give it a second to cool off here. Then I'll rotate it around and that'll give me the two pieces I need for the uh, trailer and then the leftover pieces I'll use for the and um, I'll have to do the same process again. I'll use those, will be those will go on the ramps. these connect the base of the connect the lines I did a little long I can trim them, trim them up later um, hopefully it doesn't pop loose and scare the bee Jesus out of me there's a little bit of slag that they hung in there, especially on the first cup of the remaining cups went pretty clean, so they should pop out pretty easily. subsequently pull a little bit more but it's not a big deal it'll it'll be easy enough to pull back into place when I know the end but there it gives a um, view of um, a quarter quarter round I guess for lack of a better term that'll get welded up in this end piece and the other one will get cut up and it'll be the section for the the ramps so I think I'm going to stop it there. It's getting a little bit later in the afternoon. I got some other chores to do and uh, bring you back tomorrow. And we'll start cutting out the piece actually here out of the channel that that fits into. So I'm going to go into getting this piece cut out. I'm going to use the torch today just to show it as an alternate method of, versus the plasma cutter. And then after that's done, um, I'm going to talk a little bit about some additional cross members or or I guess a sub cross member you could call it that I'm going to tie in because the rear portion is going to be uh, expanded metal. I want a little bit of extra support. So let's, uh, get, let's get going on cutting out this uh, rear, rear portion. Okay, now that that's done, I'll zoom you in a little bit here. 
or at least got to be a better angle. So, if you recall, when I talked about the, the dovetail of the beaver tail portion, it's going to be three feet long, and it'll be angled. So, realistically, other than acting as a ramp, there isn't a whole lot um, that will happen on that portion of the deck. So it doesn't really need to be a solid material. Um, additionally, if it was wood, that if you're trying to load something and it's wet, it can be pretty slick. So I'm going to use expanded metal on that portion for a couple things. One, to get traction. Um, and it allows, if there is mud and stuff on tires you pull up, you can wash that off really easily. So given the expanded metal in itself, once it's welded around the perimeter, it's, it's not like it's going to break, but it will stretch a little bit because it's the nature of it being expanded. So I'm going to add a couple, um, I'm using that same three inch channel. And so I'm just going to add some cross, or some, I guess, longitudinal cross members for lack of a better term. Um, I'm going to add a couple of those in and then that'll give extra support for the expanded metal. The spacing on those, um, I, I, instead of being divided up exactly evenly, I looked at basically what's the the, uh, the wheel track on a, a standard pickup or a car, and then also what the wheel track was on my tractor, and kind of split the difference a little bit. So I, I'm going to be able to have one of those um, secondary cross members basically where the wheels would land, and so that'll put virtually no load at all on the expanded metal, and then I'll add one more, the, which is about right where this one's sitting, that's where it needs to be, but then that would still leave a fairly large section in the middle, so then I'll add one more, we'll end up being right here. Uh, so it's almost evenly split, splits the difference. So uh, on those cross members, you should be able to see there, you can see the silver pencil, um, instead of just butting them up against this channel and having that open portion, instead of having that open portion of expanded metal, or of uh, the channel, by notching it out in that shape drawn there in the silver pencil, that will tuck into um, the existing cross members and you get a much better fit. And then I'll weld it in. So I've got to poke those out. And then on the other opposite end, um, there'll be that hat quarter round that will match this quarter round here. So that will allow for that piece that we cut out in the last episode to fit. And then also, once those are in here, and then this quarter round, quarter round piece is in there, that will only set right here about like this. And the hinges will come off that. It'll probably be more than strong enough as is. But at the hinge locations, I wanted to give a little bit extra reinforcing. So what I did is I cut these gussets out that happen to fit. I'll show you on the outside, but they happen to fit into the channel perfectly. They're, they're shaped with that taper. Um, so they'll fit into this piece here behind it at each hinge location. You can kind of see it in this, this drawing I've got here that I just sketched out. Let me find a pointer. So this is the quarter round we talked about, it shows you on the computer. This, this piece here was the piece that I cut out, but the, the, the pencil color is the channel, a cross section of it. And then this red hash portion is that gusset that I just showed you. So it will basically tie that quarter tube to the bottom and make a very, very rigid area. And then the ear will go on here that the hinge pin will go through. So, so I'm going to work on, <coughs> excuse me. I'm going to work on getting those cut out. I'll do those with the torch. <coughs> and once those are tipped in there, then that'll allow me to weld this cross member in because it'll stay fixed in that position. And then that will only leave the cross member that happens to kind of bridge across th that joint up there at three feet where the beaver tail will tip down. So that'll be the very last cross member to put in. So, um, so I'm going to get going on that. Uh, that'll probably be a, a fast forward section because it's a fair amount of cutting and grinding. And I'll stop here and there to kind of show you some close up stuff. So uh, let's get going.
This is one advantage of using the torch. I mean, new technology is great, um, but this is one advantage of using the torch when coping channel like this because the plasma cutter, even high-end plasma cutters, you know, you start getting in that five-eighths of an inch or three-quarters of an inch, it takes a very large plasma cutter to, to, to cut through that much material. And so with the torch, when I get down to this, the web, that's in essence almost an inch and a half thick. So the torch doesn't care. Um, I can cut, I can go from this thin edge and as I come around the corner, it still pierces all the way through that inch and a quarter. So, I mean, I'll clean this up with a grinder, but it's able to come around the corner and cut all the way through that thicker portion. Uh, so, old school technology in this case uh, is a better choice than the new school stuff. here in the same channel that it'll dog into so even without touching up with the grinder hold the correct angle here on the camera so that gives you an idea of how that'll cope down into there so you get a much better fit in the weld in fact as is I can just touch up the slide on there and weld it as is this one's a little bit a little bit tight it's just touching so it'll, it'll only take a tiny little, little touch up on the sides and it'll fit well so I'm going to go. Uh, I'm going to go cut two more pieces. Um, I actually have to cut a total of two more for this one, and then a couple for that one. But because I don't know 100% where I'm going to put that one, I don't know the length. So I'm going to just cut two more. That'll allow me to get this cross member weld in, and then I'll worry about those other four um, at a future date. So I'm not going to bring you around. Actually, I don't think you've seen the channel cut on the saw how well it does. So I, I actually might bring you around and set you up so you can see that's a fairly thick channel and give you an idea of how quickly and how well the cold saw works. saw back at 90 degrees I had cut uh, I'll talk a little bit about how an efficient way to make those gussets instead of having to cut the whole piece out so this will be in real time I won't speed this up here this is actual real time faster than either an abrasives chop saw or a, um, a band saw. And again, um, compared to an abrasive saw, which would be very, very hot, I'll take my glove off. I mean, you can feel a tiny little bit of warmth there, but virtually nothing. The square is nice and, or the cut's nice and square. Just a tad bit of a burr on one side, so by far the way to go. To mark out those coats, if a person had a whole lot of them to do, it's sometimes it would be worthwhile um, just making a little paper template or even a little template out of sheet metal that you could um, that you could scribe the inside of. But um, we only have a couple here to do. I find this is easy to have. You can have a scrap piece of the channel. That matches the profile, and I just lay it on there just where it would be touching. And grab it that way. the round, the quarter round coke here on, or cut on the other end when they set it in here like this to match the pipe. 
I'm going to clamp them up in there um, just to make sure because where this is a partial piece, the little template I made, which is this guy here, uh, you have to try to account for the these being a little bit lower, and so I laid those out where I'm almost positive it should go, but to be on the safe side. I'll tuck them up in there and hold them in place and then I can just basically take a level or a string line off this top point and that bottom point to make sure it indeed matches the line. And then I'll tuck those out. Okay, those are all fitting nicely now. I like I said, they'll just set in here. Like Gotta move that cross member ahead a little bit. So, I think I'm going to, um, I've got to clean this up, so I'm going to do that next because this is still fresh or uh, a little bit of slag on it from the original cut. So I'm going to, I'm going to clean that up next and then we'll work on positioning that cross member and these little uh, sub cross members. I'm going to use the big grinder for that though because it takes a little longer. Slag is out of there. So given when they set in here, given I don't really have anything to set them on, actually what I'll do is I'll, I'll uh, they're a quarter of an inch. The top of this is a quarter inch below the top of the main frame. <coughs> Excuse me, so I'll just lay a straight edge across there. Kind of see what I'm doing here. So I just basically have lined the this straight edge up with the uh, that one upper edge of the quarter cut on both ends, and then that that brings it um, in line here with the top. So you can see my silver line there. I think you can see it. I was really really close. I was maybe just a tad high on here, but that'll leave room for a little bit of fillet. So. Uh, when I laid the template out on there, it actually was in the correct spot. With the level there, I was just checking to make sure that when I cut this out with the torch that the heat didn't pull bow this piece in, which it didn't. So everything basically is now kind of mocked up setting in place where it's going to be well and I welded up so I can transfer this distance onto those and cut those half rounds out. And then all that will all be ready to be welded in. And then if I can figure out I'll use my We've got a workbench here that I set the camera on and set, try to set all my tools on it. Terrible about setting stuff down. So now that those intersecting points are marked, 
All I've got to do is, it's a perfect arc, or not actually a perfect, normally if it was centered, it's a perfect arc, but because this is offset, I usually have my template on here. So that's pretty much prepped there. So let's uh, we'll get you down here. I don't know where you can. So that gives you kind of a view down that. So we end up with that curved, curved profile, the full length of the trailer. Said I have a mark on the end, I know where they go, but that doesn't mean that they're necessarily square. I mean, I can eyeball them they're pretty close, but I'll put a square on those here, real quick. fitting the, the quarter round piece. So you can see that's all packed in now. These, these uh, gusts I talked about, the three of them. They've got that same half moon cut out on them. So they will fit in. Again, I've got those marked out here, one in the middle, and then one fits in here. So I'll, cut, I'll have to cut those half moons out. But then other than that, uh, I'll probably do that now because it'll be easier to weld them in. It's really easy to mark those because I can just lay them in here and transfer the scribe from this piece onto each one of them. Oh, I know, remember what I was going to tell you about um, the, uh, when I cut these, of course you could cut these out of a piece of plate, but then you got to cut all four sides. So what I did on it, these happen to be, the, the web on the channel is only roughly about an inch and three quarter. So if these set in there, uh, you can't really see the angle of they stick out a little bit, but that certainly doesn't hurt anything. It just adds a little bit more support. So instead of having to cut the whole thing out of a piece of plate, I just grabbed some two inch, uh, quarter inch thick, hot rolled flat bar. So that sets the, the distance already on those two. And then when I went out, they, this angle is right at about 10 degrees, about nine and a half or so. So what I did when I went over to the saw to cut them to length is I set the saw to that nine and a half. Normally you would have to cut a pie piece out like that, but what I do is I just, as I cut one off, I flipped it around. So each one of those angles, so that set the other two distances, so there was no cutting there, then I just radius the corner on the bell grinder, so then all that leaves me to cut is just this little pie piece out. So I try to try to do that anytime I'm cutting a piece out, or I want a gusset or anything like that, if I can make it a dimensional, an even dimension, 
and I happen to have that steel on hand and that saves cutting out a piece of plate and having to do all the grinding to dress it up, etc. like the battery is getting low on the camera so you don't need to see me clean those up with the grinder so I'm gonna cut it off here and I will get those tacked in place and then I'll bring you back when I start to fit the actual quarter pipe itself okay so I've got that um, tacked in Okay, so I finished up a little bit of grinding cleanup and I laid the quarter round in there and tacked it in uh, while the camera battery was charging. So uh, I mean, kind of see that turned out pretty good. So now I'm going to just finish the stack in place. I'm going to finish um, welding that all out and then I've also uh, the underside of the main cross members. Uh, wasn't welded when it was upside down. So I'm gonna go down both sides of those and weld that up. So uh, I'm gonna get going on that. chance to cool off and then I'll come back and make another run down each side. 